Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and in this episode we have a children's Bluetooth rechargeable toothbrush. Let's get into it. Okay, please don't hate me for destroying this as I take it apart. This is probably going to be a destructive one. So should we start with the charging dock? Nice little USB based inductive charger and we'll come in through the bottom. Wow, I was hoping for something more accessible than that. That's annoying. Okay, inductive charger, one giant potted blob of epoxy and you're not gonna see anything there. Although weird that there's one strand of ceramic coated wire just sticking out there. Now the toothbrush itself, um, has removable heads, but it's basically a sealed unit. Now the diameter really makes me think there's going to be an 18650 in here. Now I guess the inductive charging point is in the bottom, so I think we're going to have to just destroy it. Frankly, oh look, the inductive charging coil, it's just a pair of ceramic wires. Hey, there you go, beautiful. It's actually a much cooler device than I thought it was going to be. So, at the bottom, the uh, inductive coil for wireless charging, which looks like it's kind of hound wound. Well, I know I've not done the neatest job of taking it apart. I said it was going to be destructive, so I'm not too fussed about it. But coil wise, normally when you see inductive charging coils, they're sort of really neatly wound and often sort of potted and cast into resins to make sure they stay in exactly the right position for the most effective power transfer. But this is just a bit scruffy, and frankly, just a big wound up spool of ceramic wire, which I guess from a technical point of view, that's all they ever are, but scruffier than I'd expected. So up here, they've got these uh, laminated, um, laminated cores and this coil up here, which again, is gonna be high frequency, which is gonna be making that sort of nearly ultrasonic vibration rather than motor or vibration or instead of sort of rotation or linear actuation, just allowing it to vibrate and move slightly. Um, I think that whole head is very deliberately separate. So if vibration doesn't damage the rest of the board. You can imagine soldered joints or even plugs won't deal well with vibration. So just for fun and I realise fun is a relative term here. I've actually just hooked up a scope to the terminal here, which is one of the connections onto the transducer. I'm going to continue to call it a transducer because I think it's closer to an ultrasonic transducer than a motor or anything like that. So let's turn this on and see what frequency we're getting out. Wow. <laughs> That's fast. So if I scroll this way a bit into some clean signal just over here, and this is 10 nanoseconds per division. Two, three, four, four. Four full waves per 10 division. That's fast. That's very fast. So that battery, 600 milliamp hour, 22.22 watt hour. It's a 14500 cell. So that's 14 millimeters in diameter and 50 millimeters long which about the same size as a double A? Yeah, I would say that's the same size. By the time you've got the connections at the top, that's probably about right. Okay, with the battery now removed, I feel a little more confident sort of poking around in here without letting the lithium ion catch fire. Okay, that's just the, uh, the chassis that sort of holds the thing in the tube. It's a very neat little circuit, really. So we've got wireless charging coming into the bottom, power quality and battery charging coming up to here. Then we've got this, which I still think is probably the Bluetooth and the output side, and not really a lot on the back at all. A lot of ground plane. And you've got the transducer at the top, and a little bit of a better view of that transducer, and the coil at one side. And you've just got this element which just slightly can move. I'm genuinely surprised when we normally get to products that are this end of the cost spectrum. When we've torn them down, there is normally something that you can distinctly point at and say, that could have been done better, or that's obviously where they cut costs. 
and aside from maybe some questionable material choices in the casing, electronically I think this is kind of great. I've really struggled to get good video of these ICs close up, um, but I do have some good high resolution photos which I will post over at the Element 14 community, so if you want to probe the part numbers and find out as much as you can and let me know what this big IC is, then please head over there, you'll find the extra photos. This IC down here is definitely the Bluetooth chip, it's a Bluetooth 4 controller with an ARM core. That's way overpowered for this application, or at least it seems to me to be. This over here is a 16 megahertz crystal, and I'm pretty sure this is a charging controller. And you can see this, this collection of four transistors down here, and the way they're laid out and connected to what I think is the charging controller, and also adjacent to the battery controller, and the inductive charging coil, it makes me think that they're sort of a rectification, almost like something between a full-way rectifier using trans, uh, transistors and maybe even partway to an H-bridge as well. Um, and that's taking that, that high frequency wave from the inductive charging and giving it to the charging controller how it wants it. To me, this has been sort of a pleasantly surprising teardown. Decent build quality, nice components, laid out in a really nice board, packaged well, for a really good value price. I mean, I'm still quite shocked. I'm given a fair amount of autonomy and choice in what we tear down in the electronics inside. And I just go for things that I think would be interesting or I've come across or I can get a hold of. But if you've got an idea for a teardown, something that you'd really like to see, a suggestion, uh, or even you've got something you'd like to donate because you think everybody else would like to see what's inside, head over to the Element 14 community. That's the best place to reach out to me and to the rest of the community. And we will do everything we can to make your teardown wishes happen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.